If you're watching this, then maybe you're interested in free and open source video editors for Linux. One of them is for Linux. The other is for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. But stick around because in this video, we're going to be doing a detailed look at both Caden Live and Flowblade here on DS Tech Media. Hello, hello, I am Jay, and this is DS Tech Media, where we cover all things technology, hardware, and software, specializing in Linux and open source. And as I said before, today we are going to be looking at Flowblade versus Aiden Live as your non-linear video editing solution. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be using the latest version of Flowblade, that's version 2.4, and I'm going to be using Caden Live version 1908. 19.12 uh, is out, and it actually includes some pretty important features that have been added, but with version 19.12, I've also had some issues, and I will touch on all of that later. I'm using the Caden Live 1908 app image, and this particular version of Flowblade is a flat pack that I'm running. So, first off, let's start with what they have in common. Both of them are built using Melt or the Media Loving Toolkit, and that is how they deal with cutting and editing. It's like an interface for working with media and video. And they both use FFmpeg as the backend for their proxy files, encoding, rendering, etc. and so forth. Both of them also include the Freeor, which is a minimalistic API for a collection of free video effects plugins. And it's cross-platform Unix, Mac, and Windows. And then they both use the Ladspa plugin architecture for the audio effects and that stands for Linux Audio Developers Simple Plugin API. Also they are both tied to the two largest Linux desktop environments. Caden Live is tied to KDE. Uh, it's written in C++ and it uses the Qt widget toolkit for its theming and looks. Flowblade is tied to GNOME. It's written in Python and it uses the GTK3 Plus widget and visual cues. Okay, so here we have the Flowblade editor and this is version 2.40 running in a flat package. Start with the preferences. You can set your default profile. It does have auto save crash recovery. Mine is set for one minute. You can remember your uh, directories. You can limit your undo stack size, your paths and how it looks them up. Here you can set your cover, transition, fade, clips. You can set the default length for images and graphics. Change how your mouse middle scroll button works. And this is all your different playback options. You can also run it in two windows. Uh, in the, the double window mode, the monitor acts as a separate window. And you can actually set it to render the graphics layout dependent on which monitor so i have two monitors and it would scale things differently on the smaller monitor or you could make it count for both areas 
Turn the splash screen on or off. This is the button decorations. It actually has a dark and a light theme, but the flow blade theme I think is the best. You can change the track heights to high DPI. Top row layout, two panels always, or three panels if width is greater than 1450px. Uh, under this performance tab, you can allow frame dropping and you can also adjust it to more than one render thread. Changing the values may cause problems with playback and rendering. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this demo project. So all your media is in this pane here, your project preview and the monitor for clips is here and your bins appear over here and projects can be split into different bins. So you, you could separate all your, you know, different types of files into bins if you wanted to. Additionally, you can add new sequences and you can also export and import sequences into other projects. You can add uh, watermarks to the sequences. And this allows you to change each sequence's number of video and audio tracks. I have one audio track, three video tracks, and this particular one. Here under project, you can create uh, color clips. There are pattern producers for noise, color pulse, I'm not sure what this word is, and EBU bars. You can create compound clips from the selected clips, from the current sequence, or audio sync merge clips from two media items. This allows you to import media from another project, log marked clip range. This will show you all of the events of the project, so every change you make. Recreate media icons, remove unused media. You can change the project profile. And this is the proxy manager. Right now I am using proxy media and you can choose between H.264 ultra fast, MPEG-4 ultra fast, or Apple ProRes 422 proxies. And we can do full size, half size, and quarter size. And if you look up here, this little white icon in the top corner of this one means that this is running as a proxy file, whereas this one is an original. That's why the quality is so much higher. Under view, we can go to full screen, switch between two and single window modes. We can change the time code layout. It's basically just how all this stuff is laid out. You can make it where the time code moves over to the left or center. Tabs position up or down, that changes where these uh, tabs are. And we can change the monitor playback interpolation. By cubic better, by linear good, nearest neighbor fast and Hyper Lacanzos is best. Under Edit, Undo, Redo, Copy, Paste, Paste, Filters, Properties, Pend, Insert, 3-Point Overwrite or Range Overwrite with the Monitor Clip, Cut Clip, Splice Out, Lift, Resync, Clear Filter, Sync All Compositors, All Filters, All in or Off, Profile Manager, Disk Cache Manager, and this basically lets you destroy your data. So it keeps audio level data, Gmic tool, session data, rendered files, thumbnails, user created custom profiles. Keyboard shortcut. You have Flowblade's default, or you can do Premiere-ish, which basically tries to emulate 
the shortcuts that you would have in Adobe Premiere and Flowblade uh, supports uh, a range log function. Basically with this, we can take and add an in and an out point to the video. So we take a video that's in the media library. We add an in or out point. And then we have that logged area saved. So we can basically go through our video and take out the parts that we want and save them as logs. And then of course later when we're ready, add it to the timeline. Compositors will appear in this tab. This is the project tab where we can manage all of our sequences. And of course this is the render tab and we can insert them or append them. This tab deals with all of our filters. So if we double click on a timeline file, this icon becomes visible and it brings up this display and they're all divided up into categories, alpha, artistic, audio, audio filter, blur, color, color effect, distort, etc., and so forth. So this is an image and if we right click it and go to add compositor or add filter, we can add them this way. And as soon as we add a compositor, the compositor window opens and we have our settings for this compositor. We can change the length right here on the timeline. And of course we can adjust the softness of the wipe. We can change the direction of the wipe as well. And of course there's a million different preset wipes. These are all the settings for the transform compositor. So we can add new points and then adjust them. So now we've got uh, compositor and some old film and glow effects here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the glow. We can also adjust compositors with the graphical representation. Okay, so one of the more prominent features of Flowblade is the extensive uh, toolbox for the actual cutting and trimming tools for working with video. And we can go to the workflow presets. We have both standard and film style. Standard is the typical film editor preset and then film style preset, which makes the insert tool the default tool can change the behavior of drag and drop to overwrite blanks, overwrite blanks on non video one tracks or always insert. And you can change uh, the behavior of how compositors work. And these are all the tools available. We've got move, multi trim, spacer, insert, cut, keyframe, slip, roll, triple, ripple trim box and standard trim and we can make them active and set them to a different position and these are all the tools currently active and we can switch to them with the numeric keys so this is the spacer and as you can see it moves everything at once and this arrow here determines which track is the current track and you can also enable or disable the tracks and we can turn the video and audio off 
for each individual track. You can also split the audio for each track. So here we have all the tracks active and if I hit X for cut, it cuts all three tracks. But if I disable that track, it's left uncut. This is the multi-trim tool and it actually performs a different type of trim. So if we set it in the middle of the clip, the icon changes. And if we put it on the edge of a clip, you can see it's ready there. So if I grab the clip on the end, we can pull that much off of it. But if I grab it in the middle, we can move the clip in its entirety inside of the size that we have it cut down to. So it's like changing that exact same length of time, but we're moving the clip through that section. This is the insert tool places the clip in front of wherever the current track is. The cut tool is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is the keyframe tool. And with the keyframe tool, when we click on a clip, it brings up this additional interface and this actually is letting us edit the volume by keyframe. Uh, this is the slip tool and it works just like the one aspect of the multi trim tool. The roll tool moves the closest edit point between two clips. I mean, you can see in the monitor how far you're going in the adjacent clip. And then there is the ripple trim tool. And this basically moves all the clips together without causing any damage. Adjust the current clip but brings every other clip along with that change. And then there is the box tool and the box tool basically allows you to grab a group of clips and move them. We also have some uh, timeline properties. You can display clip media thumbnails on or off, uh, snapping, Audio scrubbing, which with audio scrubbing on, when we drag the playhead, you can hear the audio. You can turn that off though, so you don't hear any changes to your audio as you're scrubbing. And you can have audio levels on request or always display the audio levels. And we got the zoom features undos and redos. Uh, we can use this to do fade ins, fade outs with color, split audio, or resync the selected. We can also sync clips. So now that those are synced, uh, the little line appears 
and I can move this parent clip anywhere and then I can just hit resync and it will keep its place and we could do that with multiple clips as well so now when I move the parent clip and hit resync all of the other clips will sync with the main clip we can of course uh, split the audio so now we have the audio on a separate track and we can mute the original one uh, the additional tools we have here is a volume mixer and with this we can actually manage audio for all of the tracks individually there is a pretty simple title track creator that is very basic you can add outlining and shadowing to the titles and of course you can save them but it's basic title functionality uh, one really important tool is the g mic effects g mic is gracie's magic for image computing and it's a free and open source framework for image processing it defines a script language allows creation of complex macros and what it does is it applies uh, different effects to the video but it does it frame by frame so basically as images all right this is the pencil portrait and i'm gonna go ahead and try to render this one and unfortunately in both attempts to render this as a video it gets to 94% done and stops working all together and I find the video in my home folder there but it appears as only a black screen but that is the rendering part that's failing Gmic actually succeeds in creating the images so here are all 58 frames but we can import them as a sequence and they still work also in the flat pack version specifically this tool the batch render queue that does nothing it doesn't open at all it is on their github as a filed issue report so in the timeline also we can click edit and clicking volume keyframes brings up that same dialog and also there is the brightness keyframes and we can also go to clip properties and change colors of clips there's also a shortcut for sending the clip to the gmic window so we can export tool gmic effect and two other key tools are the fast and slow motion or reverse tool and this is how flowblade deals with beating up clips you actually have to render them and it's done in percentages you can see the render length go down as i up the percentage that target folder there's several lossless ProRes and of course H.264 once it's rendered it automatically appears in the library and when we're ready to uh, export there are a few interesting export options you can export to uh, melt XML files Caden Live also deals with melt XML formattings and then there is EDL. EDL actually stands for edit decision list and it's used in the post-production process of film video editing. Uh, it's a list of real and time code data representing where each video clip can be obtained in order to conform to the final cut. It's supported to some extent by Adobe Premiere Avid Media Composer, DaVinci Resolve, Blender, Cinelera, Final Cut Pro. Uh, you can 
export the current frame as an image, of course, and you can export all of the audio as an Ardor session. And finally, when we're ready to render the project, there is an extremely extensive list of predefined formats all the way up to 8K. And since it's FFmpeg, you can even define your own user formats. And I think that is pretty much it for Flowblade. Okay, so here we have Caden Live. And it has a configuration wizard included that helps you enable VAPI hardware acceleration or NVIDIA hardware acceleration. You have to have a certain version of Melt for that to work and that is not Im available in the app image version which is the version I'm using. I don't think it's available in any of the current latest versions actually. And here we are with with the uh, configure tab and we've got various uh, miscellaneous options here we can open the last project on startup activate crash recovery which is auto save automatically import all streams in multi-stream clips that's for multiple audio streams i believe bypass the codec verification get clip metadata with exif tool or magic lantern here you can set default durations for color clips, image clips, title clips, image sequences, transitions, and fades. So we got project defaults to set the number of audio and video tracks, and we can also change the timeline review format. You can configure your proxy clips, turns everything on and off, generate for videos larger than mine is set to 1000 pixels. I am using the automatic encoding profile, but we can also do that for images and we can use external proxies for Sony PXW camcorders. Use FFmpeg for audio thumbnails, display clip marker comments, auto scroll while playing, zoom while using vertical drag in ruler, and create new transitions as automatic transitions. Sets the track heights, so how your tracks appear in the timeline. Uh, this is your environment. We can set how many concurrent threads run when rendering proxy clips. I have 6 of 12 set. This is all of your melt environment uh, locations. These are of course inside of the app image. For processing threads you can change the count but anything over one is experimental. Uh, MIME types which is different file extensions and then here is default apps for image editing and for audio. And for capture, these are configurations for doing a screen grab, support for black magic devices, and audio capture setting. Playback options, these are your transcode options. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a demo project and up here it says 14 jobs and that is because it is automatically rendering proxies for every clip if we didn't want to use a proxy for a specific clip we could just remove proxy and the clip goes back to the original media Caden live is extremely configurable just about every panel can be moved to wherever you want you can also group them together and they stack into these tabs. You can save up to four different layouts. And here I have the RGB parade, the paint mode, The histogram showing and you can turn any of these off 
by going to view. You can also uh, customize the toolbars. There's the main toolbar, that's this one. Timeline toolbar, this one here. And then there's the extra toolbar and we can move anything to any toolbar and apply. And now the three level threshold is here. There's also various color themes. Create a blender, create a bright, create a dark, create a darker, and this is create a neutral. So this is my default layout. I've got my project bin, project notes, library, project monitor, clip monitor, and screen grab are all here. And then to the right, properties, our effects, our compositors, and our timeline properties. The project bin, this is where all of your media files get audio, video, images, titles, etc. If we right click, we can uh, extract audio, transcode them to a different format, and there's a couple remox options as well. Clip jobs, stabilize, some kind of automatic scene split, and you can also duplicate the clip with speed change. Locating the clip will open it up in your file browser brings up clip properties another interesting little feature they have here is if you hold the shift key you actually can scrub the video in real time if we go to a certain uh, spot in the clip monitor we can set the current image as thumbnail in the project bin and we can disable the bin effects disabling the bin effects will disable any effects that we've added to the media files in the bin so let's say we add like a old film that is now the effect before it's even in the timeline also we can create folders this is a folder here and then over here we can add the clips we can add color clip which is literally just a plain color just like in flowblade uh, we can add slideshow clips template titles got archive.org video library free sound audio library and open clip art graphic libraries generators for counters color bars white noise if we right click and go to edit clip and it's say an image or an svg it will open it in your selected editor so in my case this is inkscape and for audio clips there we have ocean audio with the audio i split from the clip in caden lot We've also got uh, various overlays in each monitor. So I have them all on. So we're showing the audio waveform, the overlay markers, the FPS is here, and of course the uh, time code. And you can also uh, double click this. And right now it appears on my other display as full screen instead of in the interface. Uh, these buttons here control the in and out points for uh, sections of clips and there it is highlighted uh, this is an automatic insert into project bin so that is essentially the same So I guess this is essentially the same as uh, Flowblade's logging feature. They appear as subzones of the clip in the project bin. Uh, we've also got projects notes tab and you can actually insert the time codes from the project. Wherever the playhead is, you can insert them into the project notes and add different notes and when you click them it will immediately move the playhead to that location down here we've got fit project we can zoom in or out this uh, turns on automatic transitions which i'll explain later 
This turns our thumbnails for audio and video on. This turns the markers and comments on or off. And this turns snapping on or off. So when it comes to adding the clips to the timeline, we can hit T to switch between the project bin and the timeline. In the timeline, we can use B or V to add it. But first, we have to arm tracks. So if we hit A, we can arm all the tracks. And the green bars indicate where our clip will end up. We can go through it and put in and out points with O, switch back over to the timeline, and if we hit V, the clip is now in the timeline. V does the insert, whereas B overwrites. And let's say we, uh, we grab another clip and we insert it at that point. It will actually move the other clips. Also, at the bottom, you can see the audio waveform thumb. It's also displayed in the timeline. If we only wanted to drag, say, the audio or video, we click one of the icons, and then they're separate. But otherwise, they are uh, linked. So Kaden Live doesn't have nearly as many editing tools as Flowblade. Uh, it keeps it really simple. You have the standard selector tool, cut tool, and the spacer tool. But there's uh, two other tools here, and those are these red tools, and they're Lift Timeline Zone and Extract Timeline Zone. And basically, they work the opposite way. So let's say we highlight uh, only this track, and let's mark an in and an out, and let's do the lift. So as you can see, it removed that chunk. And if we were to do the extract, it removes that chunk and everything else on the line moves to where the last part of the chunk was. And if we arm them all and do the lift, they all come out. You can also uh, disable the uh, video and the audio for any track or even lock the tracks. And when you lock the tracks, no matter what you do, nothing uh, will move for those tracks. So I've locked this audio track and since it's linked to this track and to this track, nothing moves at all. And another uh, awesome feature is if we right click on an audio track, we can show recording controls. And if we just click the red button, it will begin recording everything uh, from an audio source. It will begin recording everything uh, from an audio source. So that's a pretty cool feature. There is also a feature for uh, aligning audio. If you have uh, separate audio and video sources and you import them separately, you can take and set one as a reference and then if we hit align, it will attempt to uh, line them up. And now it is uh, perfectly aligned to the audio source that is still attached to the video. Here we have the uh, compositor setting, so there's none, preview, and high quality. So with none, if I were to add an image clip, it appears above the clip below it with a black background. If we hit preview, it appears only in the size it needs to be, and full quality, it appears as it would after rendering. If we turn that off and go over here to the actual compositors and simply add a composite. Also, uh, this icon here actually allows us to 
adjust in real time and in the monitor how our uh, clips appear. And then over here we get the more fine-tuned settings. We can add a keyframe spot and cycle through them. And of course you've got different uh, alignment options and an opacity, so... In the monitor, we also have the multi-track view option. And if we turn that on, we'll actually be able to see each track appear simultaneously in the single monitor. The uh, timeline also has multiple modes. Uh, there's the standard normal mode, the overwrite mode, and the insert mode. So insert mode will actually move the uh, clip you're, that you're inserting to the end of the current clip, whereas overwrite mode will literally overwrite anything there. So everything that was underneath of that has literally been overwritten. So another thing you can do is uh, you can click the bottom right corner of a video clip to quickly add a compositor. In this case, it is a wipe. The properties for the wipe appear over here and we can invert and revert it. and change the softness. You can also change what type of wipe it is. If we hit control while dragging a clip, we get this red bar here, and this is how we adjust clip's speed in Caden Live. Alternatively, if we hold shift, we can trim the length of the clips video or audio separately so in the timeline at the end of each uh, clip section if we put the cursor at the top you'll see a little blinking circle and you can click and drag that and that adds a fade to black and at the beginning of a clip you can do the same and that's a fade from black Additionally, you can do it with audio tracks, fade in. The effects in the project bin can be especially useful if you wanted to uh, lower or change the audio levels of a clip before you add it to the timeline, or even do maybe like color correction on a clip before you add it to the timeline. So that's a very useful feature. And I don't know of a way to do that in Flowblade. Now one of the uh, coolest features about Caden Live is the uh, preview rendering feature. So I've done sort of a complicated composition here. And as you can see, it is struggling to play it in real time. We're down to five, seven frames per second. So as a way around that, we can take our in and out points and go over to here and we can add a previews and then hitting this will actually render that preview zone. So it's going to take about eight minutes and if I'm recording while it's doing it, it's going to take even longer. So I'm be right back. Okay, so now the render is done. And this is useful if you're on a laptop or just doing anything complicated you may need something like this to light tin the load uh, the only thing is, is that it does consume a little bit more memory when you're doing this 
Speaking of memory, do automatic previews and to remove the preview zones. You could render the entire uh, video technically if that's what you needed to do. And we can go to manage our cache data timeline preview almost 200 megabytes 5.1 gigs worth of proxy clip audio thumbnails video thumbnails of course you can delete all these things you can even go to folder where it's all stored and this is for all proxy data across all of your Caden Live. As you can see I have 137.8 gigs of cached data. Now the other important feature is the title editor you can change background colors and import images i don't think uh, flowblades titler uh, supports importing images and the other cool thing is this one supports animation so you can have a start point and an end point to create uh, motion titles so that's my start and this is the end. Add them both, we could get this effect. Another awesome feature of Caden Live, the library. So basically the library is a place where you can save parts of anything you're working on and it'll be there uh, in another video. It saves it as a .mlt melt file. If we take uh, this entire section that I just did, we highlight it and we go over here to add timeline selection to library. Okay, so there it is now. Let's just pretend that this is a brand new project. I add the clip to the project. We go to the project bin. We can add it to the project. And anything that we did, we can add to another project. Uh, you can do this with Flowblade using the uh, import uh, another sequence function but the way that Caden Live does it I think is just a lot cooler. You also have the ability to archive projects and you can compress them and it'll show you the total size of everything and if you choose to clean the project it will remove all the unused clips so everything that's just taken up space that you didn't even use. Caden Live also has a pretty extensive rendering configurations. You can rescale and you can force progressive or interlay scanning. Over here you can set how many threads it uses from your CPU to render. And you can make various scripts out of the FFmpeg configs that it outputs so you can render by guide zones as well that is it for kden live so that's it i i personally use both but i honestly favor kden live especially for my larger projects i just feel like i get things done faster with it and have more experience the uh, big takeaways here flowblade of course includes gmic processing which is very cool the newer version of Caden live adds an audio mixer uh, 1908 the version i use here does not have that feature whereas flowblade does include an audio mixer another big win for Caden live is the on the fly speeding up of clips whereas with flowblade you have to preset it you can't just drag and drop you're setting a percentage and then you have to render it. Another feature added to version 1912 of Gaiden Live is transparent or global effects, which are basically a way to add f effects to entire tracks. So you can, you know, add maybe a change to audio or color to that entire track. I really like how Caden Live handles the project bin. I just feel like there's more features there overall. 
Caden Live's more configurable. You don't have as many options for configuring Flowblade. I think they're both pretty good looking. I feel like Flowblade looks a little more modern. I like the GTK styling better anyway. And of course, the other big win for Caden Live is the ability to pre-render the project in sections. Uh, that can be a real lifesaver in certain situations, especially on really complex uh, compositing and things of that nature. Uh, even without that, Flowblade does a pretty good job of rendering composites on the fly. Uh, for scrubbing and everything. They're both pretty responsive. It's a shame that they don't have GPU accelerated uh, functionality, or at least it's not simple. Let me know in the comments which one you like better, which one you plan on trying out. Another thing uh, to consider is Caden Live's a much a larger project than Flowblade. Flowblade is mostly done by uh, just one guy as far as I know. And of course if you have any questions about either of them or any comments about the video I did, let me know as well. Please like, share, and subscribe. As always, I thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and sharing. Check us out on all the different socials. Until next time, I'm Jay and I'll see you in the next one.